I'm Christopher Calloway, and this is Creator Talks, the show where I interview writers and artists working in comic books and in other mediums. I have a guest returning today from last week. Andrea Mute was on the show during the Creator Corner featurette, talking about the latest arc of Port of Earth being published through Image Comics. Well, Andrea is back, and this is actually the first conversation that we did have, recorded back in February. We are talking about his latest graphic novel being written by Robert Venditti and Kevin Maurer. It's called Six Days, The Incredible True Story of D-Day's Lost Chapter, being published by DC Vertigo. And here is the description. D-Day. 182 members of the U.S. 82nd Airborne Division parachute into the French countryside a full 18 miles southeast of their intended target. This original graphic novel from DC Vertigo is the true story of an obscure World War II battle that took place in the small village of Grenier, France, for six days and the men who survived to tell the tale. But first, Andre and I will talk about things such as why, although he lived in Italy, he enjoys the artistic freedom he has found living in the United States and the collaborative nature of making comics in the U.S., and how he adds a sense of authenticity when illustrating war comics such as Rebels and D-Day. He explains how he attends the details to create a sense of realism. This episode is brought to you by the comic book shop in Wilmington, Delaware at 1855 Marsh Road at the Plaza 3 Shopping Center, where comics are for everyone. Just be nice. And now my conversation with artist Andrea Mute. here now on Creator Talks. Andrea, welcome to Creator Talks. Thank you so much. You're from Italy. Now, what was it like for you growing up in Italy? Italy is a really ancient place, ancient country, with all the best of the history and for the worst at the same time. A small country, but at the same time full of uh, things to, to understand, to know, whatever the history is, like the culture, the arts. Uh, so it's... Uh, pretty different when you move from Italy in the United States and you can see different kind of art, for example, the landscapes and the nature is a real art of the United States, for example, for me. And the impressive power of the nature is it's incredible. But uh, in Italy, it's good because uh, it's more country, but in the same time, it could be a restriction because, uh, you know, uh, the market is pretty much different. So maybe time in time, an artist need something different, something more. Tell me the difference between northern and southern Italian cuisine. First of all, I live in the north of the northeast of Italy, between Milano and Verona, so very nice place. Very to the mountains, uh, lakes, uh, rivers. It's a very, very green area, so I'm blessed about that. Oh, the, talking about the cuisine in Italy, it's, it's like open a, a Bible because <laughs> it's incredible stuff of the receipts, you know? But, for example, for the north, it's very typical the pork and very typical the cheese because uh, the climate's pretty cold, so maybe it's better for this kind of stuff. In the south, we have it's full of flavors, full of uh, veggies, uh, fishes uh, and whatever is impossible to reduce in a couple of items uh, of <laughs> the Italian cuisine. But uh, we can see is two different worlds because once you pass over Rome, the incredible uh, different uh, landscape of uh, different flavors, uh, tasty. Let's say it's really amazing. <laughs> it's, it's really important for me. It's hard for me to explain, but. For the for the participants, it's uh, that kind of stuff. Yes, fishes uh, for the south, for example, and the veg and the fruits for the south, of course. And for the north, cheese. The wine is very good, of course. And uh, I live in a very popular area called Francia Corta, very famous in uh, around the world for the white sparkling wine, prosecco, satin, uh, millesimato. It's very very tasty and very good stuff. I understand you have a degree in geometry. I don't know yeah. anyone who has a degree please, in please. geometry. No, don't, don't say it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <Why? laughs> it's pretty great, right? Because I was very young. I was in doubt about two ways for me. Or geometry or the School of Art, of course. But once I did a test to be a member of the School of Art, of it embraced very popular. But uh, at the time, I was not accepted. 
<laughs> pretty crazy, right? Because the the school of art uh, 25, 30 years ago was uh, different. I mean, uh, the art was not comics on illustration, but the whole art. So for me, was really a kind of distraction. Seems way to say, but a kind of distraction. So uh, have another idea. I tried to take a look about the genre because it was uh, graphically stuff. <laughs> I'm not a real fan of, of that. But at the same time, I did a kind of college in the night time uh, about comics and illustration. So I, I had the time to do both schools at the same time. Uh, the school of art was really, really difficult and maybe uh, was not the, the real right choice. So no time to do what I really want to do. Now, you went to the comic school in, I think it's Brescia, Italy. Ruben Souza, that was his school. And I looked at a little bit of his art, and a lot of that style rubbed off on you. What can you share about him? He was Argentinian from Argentina, and uh, he was a real great artist, especially about watercolors and inky stuff. It's incredibly impressive. I met him, uh, I think, in uh, with my mom. Yes, and uh, he was just around in Italy a few years, I think two, three years, because he was a refugee after the you know, dictation of the South America dictator, so it was a really bad stuff in Argentina. So uh, he was a great artist and he founded this uh, school with little, little, very small reality in Brescia, but in two or three years, grew up in really amazing, uh, different way. And uh, I can say that at school, uh, there were with me uh, excellent uh, drawers so that are now are professionists for Marvel Comics uh, or for Italian publishers. So it was a, a little great uh, a canteen like in the regiment for the arts and uh, it was a challenge because uh, I was very young I was 16 years old so very young in the morning I was at school normal school geometry at, at the end during the night for three hours by day I was in that school and for me it was like a, a dream because uh, I felt the creation the creative arts you know the illustrations the comics the crayons the pencil inks uh, the watercolors I can touch my hands the, the real world about comics so it was incredible how did you wind up in florida from italy yeah <laughs> first of all for my kids we and my wife would like to move here so give to my kids uh, a new chance to to move their mind and their sociality in their studies because italy uh, is a very good place you know but at the same time suffering about the last 20 years suffering in uh what do you say the blind future for the next generation. Okay, so uh, I think that the United States uh, still remain the land of the opportunities. In the same time, uh, for for my job is very important because I am much more closer to my publishers for DC Comics, uh, Top Cow, Vault, Dark Horse, uh, Marvel, and whatever. And for me, move on the shows and talk uh, by phone or get meetings with them is easier. And uh, could be a uh, life experience, uh, work experience, uh, uh, social experience. Uh, uh, we try, we try. So why not? It's a, and of course, it's a great place ever. <laughs> <laughs> Endless summer. <laughs> I love Florida. <laughs> right, that's right. <laughs> yes. I hate cold. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, you wouldn't like it up here right now, right? <laughs> yeah, I haven't died just for a week. <laughs> Well, you talked about working with comic book companies, and some of your work I want to mention that I actually read. You did some work for Dynamite, Noir, and The Shadow. Port of Earth, I've actually had uh, Zach Kaplan on the show back when he was starting out with Eclipse. And his second book, you did the art on You are doing the art on that. And also, of course, Mad Max Fury Road, that one shot. I enjoyed that very much. So tell me about starting out in comics working with the big publishers. What was that like when you finally had a chance to break through and you see your name there on the comic? For me, the U.S. comics are the best about storytelling because I I worked for the Italian publishers, for French publishers, it's very good. But is, for me, is a kind of rope around my neck because uh, for me, free to express something, I need room, space on the page. So I need to, to move the layouts, to move the the, the, the bodies, uh, the figure, the characters. I can't my, feel myself strict in a cage. And in Europe, uh, you're a bit strict about the cage. You have a, a different rules. It's not bad 
better or worse. It's, it's different rules. So uh, for me, it's the maximum expression is the U.S. comics. So uh, of course, uh, when you make uh, big names, uh, publishers in the United States, it's pretty amazing because they are iconic, of course, for my, you know, I was very young when I get started to read U.S. comics. And uh, for me, it's a real challenge, but at the same time, a pleasure and a very, what I can say, a very exciting stimulation because uh, in the United States, I can say that there's a kind of uh, team crew literature, you know, you're not alone, but you're like a team where you're a writer with the public editors, uh, always close to you, very uh, positive because uh, you never win alone. Always together, and I feel very well this kind of uh, feelings in the United States with my partners, my friends. I can say I, I, my friends like Kappa, like Ben Wood, like uh, my Guggenheim, uh, my and the Eagles, whatever, or everybody. When you share the same passion, you want to do the best, uh, but with not big head or not thinking about your realities or something, I think that the books can be better and better than much more than you expect because I. Never forget that I am a reader before to be an artist. Uh, I'm a very hard reader. I read a lot of books and comic books, and I still prefer remaining my heart and my soul a reader. So when I approach a new comics, a new books, a new story, I approach the time like a reader. So I want to be happy. I want to be satisfied, to be proud, and enjoy me, but especially enjoy the readers. And of course, editors and the writers by this domo. And the same I feel from, the, from my partners, like, like I had. So I'm really, really blessed about that. Well, you're passionate about comics. You've enjoyed reading them. What are some of the ones that you enjoyed reading growing up? I get started with uh, one of the best uh, Italian comics called Ken Parker. Ken Parker was in a New York Western stuff uh, of my old friend, Ivo Milazzo. And uh, I was... Uh, Maybe five years old. I get started to read with my comic book. Uh, with so and then for instance, the second is Spider Man and of course my super favorite one, Batman. I am a big fan of Batman. And uh, yes, I started very, 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 very early, very young. Yes, before the the elementary school because I very curious about uh, the comics. And I remember my uncle, uh, he had a big library with dozens, dozens, millions of comic books because he was very passionate. And for me, when I was uh, at his home, uh, for me it was wow, like Eden, to paradise. And step by step, with my with, with, with the stairs, I bring up some comic copies and reading and smelling the paper and try to copy the drawings. Uh, and I want uh, to say that I still remain like a kid in my soul because uh, this kind of job is uh, it's not your choice. It's this job choose you. Make sense? Yes, it does. Uh, I'm glad you keep that youthful enthusiasm as I do, and I hope yeah, someday, yeah. <laughs> I hope someday, I'm that uncle who has all the books because no one had, <laughs> no one was reading comics when I grew up, so I just started from scratch because that was something I gravitated towards. And you know, if I have a place to put them all, I hope I still have them for my kids and their kids, etc. Now, you work as an artist, very hard as an artist. Ever think about writing? and drawing your own mini-series or graphic novel? Oh, I did a couple of uh, my own stories uh, for the French market. It's a thriller story called Nero, yes. But uh, uh, the point is, I love to share the ideas. Uh, I, I did uh, two, three, or five books, I think, uh, uh, on my own, no? like like a writer. But uh, I have to say, uh, when you write, when you draw, or calling you, with yourself alone, for me it's too much. Uh, when you share the ideas, when you share, I, I love the contact. Of course, time time, if I have an idea, I say, I take it and uh, I can do it myself. But uh, I can see that uh, the the teamwork for me it's very stimulation. It could be hard, of course, time and time, but at the end, I can say it's the best way because you are not author referential. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, you are never uh, the same when you share your mind with another mind. The, the, the comfort is very, very useful. And you grew up very uh, fast and better and better and better. If, uh, very often, especially in Italy, uh, there are writers that are drawer too, but with the time, for my feelings, they still remain themselves every time because they look always themselves, always themselves, always themselves, and there's no curiosity because it's outer referential stuff. And I feel that 
pretty boring. For example, graphically talking is the same. If I have a science fiction story, I approach the pages in a totally different way than any historical stuff. And in that way, I can develop graphic style that I never did. And for me, it's, wow, incredible. Maybe it's a shit, okay, okay. But it's a kind of uh, evolution. It's uh, the best way. It's very fun. Uh, it's very funny and useful because I am ductile. I try to do that. So I can do superhero stuff in the classic way, historical stuff, what's your call? But not because I'm, I am a genius. No, 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 totally not. But because I try to force myself to do something different. If you could work on any Marvel or DC character, who would that character be? Would it be Batman? Is that something that you would want to do someday, collaborate with someone? I'm a big fan of Batman, you know? And one of my favorite writers is, of course, uh, <laughs> Scott Snyder, that I know very well. But uh, there's a lot of uh, great writers and great characters, for example. It's a very hard uh, question because uh, I have to say I am a very DC man, you know. <laughs> for me, DC Comics is the comics because in Batman especially, uh, resume all the kind of uh, genres, you know. Thrillers and fiction, horror, uh, metaphysical stuff, uh, superhero stuff. So for me, it's a very complete character. So I'd love to make a graphic novel about uh, Batman and about Pennyworth. I love Alfred the Pennyworth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that guy. And, uh, you know, about the writer, <laughs> I don't want to erase anyone. But I think that there are very great writers, especially very young. So it's, uh, it's a very good point for me. Very good point. It's very stimulation. Uh, like, you know, my friends, Kaplan, Katie, O'Sullivan, Pacquiao. Wow, it's, it's crazy. So, well, it's, it's, hard, it's hard question. Now, we've talked about some of your comics, and you know, among them, of course, Rebels with Brian Wood, and that had some basis in history, even though some of the characters were fictional. It was based in history. Now, this one you're working on now with Robert Venditti and Kevin Maurer is based on an actual event, Six Days, D-Day. Now, you're really excited, as I am, about this book coming out. Tell me about when you were tapped for that assignment. For example, for Rebels, and that uh, is one of my, I think, one of my best work, very detailed, a lot of stuff with the Grand Wood, that's a good friend of mine, and Dark Horse, uh, who was really, really great. And uh, the work about the historical stuff, uh, the detailing, but especially of the mood. When I do something uh, about the history, of course, I have to be close to the real history, but at the same time, I, uh, I'd like to suggest uh, the feelings about this kind of uh, period. Because uh, several times when you have a book in your hand, a historical book, right? And uh, you uh, take a look about the photos on the pictures of the museum, for example, you see the, the costumes, all the jackets and the, the weapons, okay? And all seems very clean, very good, because, you know, it's a reproduction, no? it's a reconstruction about the history. But the history was a real time. So the soldier, for example, <laughs> was never super clean, super good, with all the bottles on the jacket, with the good sword, with the good head. No, it's very dirty. It's very desperate. Or in the world, this is kind of feel I want to suggest in the rebels and in six days. For example, if you take a look at the real photos about the Second World War, you can see the soldier and you can compare the soldier, real soldiers with the real uniforms. It's totally different because yes, it's green, is that uniform, but it's used, broken, dirty. Uh, it's in the, the real world because yes, there was, but used. In, we are in the war. No cleanup, no showers. So this is the reality I want to suggest. And uh, with, with Ron Brownwood, the same, Kevin and Rob, because this is the point. Maybe I can be wrong in some details. I can miss something. Okay, it's good. It's okay. It's uh, because I'm a human being. But it's not the point. The point is to uh, put in the heart of the readers and in the mind the feelings about the real world. The real world, in that case. In the other sense, if I am super detailed, super picky about the details, we lose the impact. So it's kind of fake, it's a reconstruction. And talking with my grandfather, I remember that he was in the Second World War, <laughs> he fought uh, time and time like uh, a normal man. So, yes, he was a soldier, but no uniform because it was broken, no new one. Makes sense. There's no a new uniform or new rifle. It's broken. Okay. Yeah, I guess uh, you know you're stuck with that uniform the duration of the campaign. And if your weapon gets damaged, well, maybe you can pick up another one along the way from an enemy. You know. <laughs> 
Exactly. The same for rebels. For rebels, the muskets, a real mess. Nothing like in the movies, no, very heroic. So you shoot the gun, but it's very rare to take the, the target. Very rare, because it's totally in preparation. No real soldier. It's, it's a kind of Napoleonic stuff. So they were not prepared about that. And the youth was the same. And the men are the same. So there was the farmers, most of them. So what is the feeling? You know that they're super cool men, super cool jacket, super cool tricon, and super cool, uh, you know, it's not a video games. No, <laughs> it's the real world. <laughs> Are you friends with Robert and Kevin? Have you been friends with them for a while? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. For Robert, I love his job. And Kevin, I know just one novel. It was pretty new for me. But it's a great right writing. The great novelist. Now, with the two of them, are you getting twice the input, or is Robert your main contact for letting you know about the story beats, etc.? Yeah, no, I had the contact with from uh, from DC, and when I talked with dude Kevin, I fell in love with them <laughs> quickly <laughs> in, in a bit. I'm really, really blessed about that because I can say that uh, at the first instance it was totally in common, you know, the same culture, the same uh, sharing, the same ideas. So for me, it was a uh, come on easy. I can say easy <laughs> when you work with the kind of guys like that with the, the, in Mark Doyle with DC Comics and Maggie Holland such an amazing guy with the whole which for the colors so really great team ever now in order to research for this story as you mentioned there's photos you can look at for World War II your grandfather had experience in World War II did he share any details about his battles I know some of the uh, greatest generation don't really talk about what happened. They just got the job done. You know, my grandfather was not in that specific battle. He fought in Italy, not in France. But I remember uh, his uh, his uh, stories, but he was not really happy to tell me that story. I was very young, and I know something. All the rest is my own culture, my own curiosity. I grew up for the, the documentaries, uh, books, uh, and uh, I had the chances in Italy to have a couple of uh, important meetings uh, in, for uh, the veterans. And in that case, I asked them all around about the details of the war. But it is, you know, it's difficult, it's strange uh, when you talk about the war with the veterans. It's not like, like the same in America. I met some very often of veterans and for example, a good friend of mine is a veteran from Vietnam. And uh, when I talk to him about the Vietnam, he's very, very, what do you say, not so happy, don't like to remind Vietnam. So, in the same for the Second World War. So, I, I respect a lot this guy, I'm all proud of them. In the same time, I respect their silence. Now, we're talking in the early days before this book comes out. This is not too long after it was solicited in Diamond's previews. So what can you tell me about the story itself? It's a struggle because, for the first of all, it's a real story uh, about uh, a grand um, grandparents about uh, Robert and David. His relative, for me, when I saw the real photo about uh, his uncle, Uncle Tommy, uh, was a kind of a, a treat because when I draw a story about Second World War or something, and it's a fiction, it's okay. But when you do something that is really happen, it's pretty hard. In the last issue, there's a, a sequence, very, very violent, very hard, because, you know, uh, there was real people, and in the photos, uh, it was pretty, pretty hard. But at the same time, is uh, right, is good, to show the real violence about the world, and the real violence about the human against other humans, human beings, I'm sorry. And this is the point. So uh, brutality for nothing, uh, crazy stuff, or the violence for nothing. Uh, and is a good point too. When you close the book, uh, I, I hope that the readers bring some time to think about that because you know, war is already is too much close around. So it's pretty heavy stuff. But in the same time, it's very powerful. It's very powerful, very realistic. So for me, it was uh, was very very cool. How do you approach? making all the characters in the book distinct, look different. Good point, good point. Uh, except Uncle Tommy and uh, his friend, all the rest are characters. You know, in the comic book, you have the main characters and the, the secondary. So we have to, with likeness, very particular. In that case, are simply men. No specific characters. And the same for the Nazis. Because, for example, very often the Nazis are in shadow. But the point is not the, the good against the evil. But the point is the war. In the war, there's no time to recognize anyone. So, the war, the fight, uh, the dead, 
always uh, close to you, and all the rest. The, maybe the real characters of the French families around in the village. This is, the, is, is very interesting for me. For the U.S. soldiers, for the, the paratroopers, they are simple men, red, red, with mustache, they're smoking, but they are simple men in the simple world, in the great world. So this is the point. It is a specific idea, a specific uh, what do I say, uh, way to follow about that. I was really convinced and really um, strict about this kind of way. I don't want to do something spectacular about wow, what character. No, no, no. The point is the world, the suffering, and of course the real history and the real story of Uncle Tommy and company. And this is going to be through DC and it's going to be a Vertigo imprint. Greatness for Vertigo again. And I've seen some of the art. It looks really, really good. This is going to be coming out ahead of the 75th anniversary of D-Day, which is May 14th. Exactly. Yeah. It's a very important point. I think I am so proud about this. Very, very proud. Because I hope that this book can help the new generation or readers or the young generation to remind something. Because I think the new generation have to remind, to recall about that. Well, it is really important to share those stories with the younger generation who weren't there and don't even maybe know people who were there to get that feel of the pain, the agony, the, the decisions those individuals had to make and survival and to save freedom for everybody in the world from a, a horrible dictator. Exactly, exactly, exactly. That's so critical, but I know you're excited about it. I'm excited about it. I'm really looking forward to it because I love stories that are more grounded in history and reality. I still love the old stuff. That's the kid in me. But as I get older, yeah, I like reading stories a little more grounded, The Shadow. I mean, maybe he's not that grounded. And, of course, the war stories. Thank you. Not me too. Thank you, man. Now, at this time, we're going to start the section kicking back with the creator where I ask questions about you, not necessarily about comics unless you want them to be, just to get to know you better as a person. My first question, what do you like to do for rest and relaxation? For sure, fishing. <laughs> well, you're in the right yeah. place in Florida. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With my kids, you know, with, the, with the boats, I love fishing really because every time I have no idea what we're going to catch. So for me, it's a real mystery. And, you know, Florida is full of for life uh, and every everywhere I move my head I show something uh, reading of course and uh, documentary stuff for me is uh, my favorite uh, passion on the TV for me the TV it's just a blind video just blind screen except for the documentaries and uh, time in time I'm painting uh, watercolors and of course with my family you know, of course, my mom and my kids I am very very lucky because I'm working at home and my studio is at home I can have time for my kids so uh, they can look around they look me, I look at them, and the time in time they draw with them, with me. Uh, and of course, one of my highest road passion is the traveling. Traveling uh, is for me is uh, the best way to to spend your life. See, I'm a simple guy. Now, where do you like to travel to? What are some of your favorite places? So about the United States, I, I, I have a degree in the U.S. history. For me, the Southwest uh, America is a kind of dreamland. I feel when I am in that place, I feel a kind of uh, bond about that. So I kind of link. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, for me, canyons, uh, the deserts, uh, the mesa, the butte is a kind of, uh, you know, the Native American landscape and the details of the reservation. I spent a lot of time with them. One of my patients is a uh, history, of course, and stay with them is pretty crazy. It's, uh, it's amazing. I'm not making this up. That is my favorite place in the U.S. People who listen to the show know I'm always talking about it. I've been to Las Vegas numerous times, Nevada, Arizona, Utah, Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, the Four Corners I area. Oh, my. It, yeah, it, Four Corners. Well, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is America. So the frontier, you know, you can see the frontier west. So I, I spent it two weeks, three years ago, in a ranch in uh, Arizona, in the Badlands of Arizona. Ah. And we are in really far in the desert, in the, in the nowhere. And we spent two weeks uh, with the real cowboy life. I, at the beginning, I thought, oh, come on, cowboys, like a, like a movie. No, no, cowboys in the United States, it's a job. You know, it's a real job. And stay with them. It, it was like a, you know, kind of uh, much more an experience, the real life. Uh, it's not so different than the 80s, uh, you know, it's uh, <laughs> one <laughs> thousand eighties. It's pretty much the same, very hard, early in the morning. But the the contact with the, the horses, the contact with the nature, 
Oh, the horseback next in the dawn on the sunset was uh, really in- impressive. And working with them, the chorus was a really, really great experience for me, for my kids, for my wife. Uh, you know, I love this stuff. And it will make you a better artist because you've lived the life. So if you have to do a story about that, you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I try. I try. Now think back to a birthday, any birthday that stands out in your mind. It could be a favorite birthday. It might just be a memorable one. Maybe not the best one, but you remember that. Which birthday was that, and why does it stand out in your mind? Uh, you know, uh, after the forties, I forget my birthday first of all. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh-huh. So I can say, okay, the fourth thing was the best because from that point I stopped to grow old. So <laughs> I'm growing old stuff. So yeah, from my, yeah, I think it's a. Uh, I have to say I'm not a real passionate about my blood, not for my for my age, but because uh, I don't know, it's, it's a day. I prefer to be happy for the the other <laughs> the other ones. Uh, so I don't know. It's a silly question. I, I don't know. Uh, correct answer for you, but I think you understand what I mean. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Let's go back to a time when you were much younger, 12, 14, somewhere in there, middle school age. What posters or pictures did you have on your bedroom wall? Pictures, good point. Because I had a, a picture, was a watercolor, a copy of watercolors of the Mormon Valley, and uh, it was not, not so big, not so big, uh, but for me it was a kind of dreamland. Uh, I, I was very, very young, I think 10 years old. Yes, it, it was a gift from my uncle, if I remember. It just passed away, and uh, I, because he knows that I love you no know, the, the the Indians and the Native American, and this uh, this picture was not high quality. It was a color, you know, very easy. But for me, it was the the end of the dream, the dream land stuff, or in, the place of everything. And I I I lost that picture. Come on, wow, a, a long time ago, recall. If you were stuck on a desert island, what is the one book that you would want to have with you? Ooh, for a strong reader, it's a hard. Mm-hmm. Look, 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 look. Wow, wow, what's the question? Oh, my goodness. Fuck. <laughs> because it's super big, the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> because it's super big, I can't read. No, uh, I, wow. My uh, super favorite is a trail of tears, uh, the rise and fall of the Cherokee Nation, the John Healy. For me, it's very, very important for me you know, knowledge about the Native American Cherokee uh, bad history uh, with stories. So I think, yes, could be that one. Another hypothetical. If a company were to make an action figure of you, a toy action figure of Andre Muti, what would be your accessory? What should go in there with you as your accessory? I think it's a smiling kid with wrinkles and red hair. Wash. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a bit gray. You know? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think the kid's inside me. Yeah. Okay. Now, your beverage of choice. When you're relaxing, what do you like to have? I love beer, for example. Uh, I love wine, but I'm not a real hot drink. The beer uh, is, a, is like a company in the summertime. So, but if I have to say a uh, special drink, very, very special, I love uh, white wine. I really love it's a uh, prosecco is uh, from my my place, my my land, and it's called La Montina. It's a little canteen. Uh, it's a very flavoring and light wine, and in summertime it's very very good. And about the the whiskey, I love Talisco. I love my you know. I taste it once a year, maybe. But yes, the Scottish Talisker whiskey. You sound like me. Yes, I like beer. And <laughs> I like wine. And, well, you know, occasionally whiskey. <laughs> it's hard to choose, but those are all wonderful choices. Can you recall the most difficult job you ever had? Every time you have a job. <laughs> no, I have a job. Ooh. Oh, have a job is like when I have a. <laughs> Super thick <thin> deadline. <laughs> uh, so I had this job. Hmm. You know, I never see uh, my job like a hard job. I don't want to do that because uh, it could be, uh, it could happen. But uh, if I I feel something like that, uh, that means that I I'm wrong or or, or, or I am. We're gonna say I'm full or something. You know. But uh, I want the hardest job. Uh, 
Rebels uh, at the beginning was pretty hard because the documentation was really, really long. But hard in the, the good way. It's not hard like uh, pain in my neck. No, hard because it was long. And uh, long about the documentation and about the history. I, I read a couple of books before to start the, the single because um, we waited for one year and down before to get started uh, the, the comic books. So I had time to you know, to prepare myself. But hard is not the right word, but I think you mean, do you understand what I mean? Yeah, so that was the most difficult job you had to work on so far. Now, outside of comics, not working in art, was there a job that you had, maybe while in school, a job that you had to do outside of art just to kind of make some money? So uh, at the beginning, when I was very young, before to start uh, my, my career, I was very, very young, I think uh, 17, uh, so teenager. I was um, a clerk, and uh, I worked with, uh, with uh, my uncle in a restaurant, and it uh, was pretty, very hard because I was the last uh, wheel of the, the, <laughs> of the communist dog. So, yes. That period was very hard because uh, I was uh, at school in the, in the morning. Uh, in the afternoon was in the art school, and in the evening, for to pay the art school, I was uh, with my uncle to work in the restaurant. It was very hard, but at the same time, very useful because uh, I'm a not bad cooper. I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Uncle. <laughs> Man, your uncle. Is this the same guy with the comics? No, another one. It's, it's, uh, yeah, no, another one. You're blessed with very talented and helpful uncles. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have a big family, a huge family. Classical Italian family. Super. I have five uncles, five aunts, <laughs> those of cousins. <laughs> it's a kind of invasion. <laughs> it's too much time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's too much. With a nightmare. Oh, it's very fun. It's too much time with my family. It's, it's fantastic. I know. Italian families are big families. My grandfather. Oh, geez. I got to count on my hand now. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Five, five girls and a boy? And it's at least six kids. I, yeah. <laughs> Thanksgiving was a big deal. Uh, yeah, yes. Now, you've done other interviews, and you've been asked a lot of questions. And what I'm wondering, out of all those interviews, what's one question that someone has not posed to you, someone has not asked you, something that you wish somebody would ask you about so you could talk about it, something that you want people to know about you? What would that be that hasn't been covered yet. The point is, I want to make a bit for about the readers. Every time uh, the questions are about me, like creators, like artists, right? But I'd love to have questions about uh, me, like a reader, because it seems a stupid stuff, but it's a very important thing, because uh, all this world, all this, uh, I think, the comics world, where it, where it work, where it stay, etc., uh, have uh, a significant, have a meaning, so, because I am a reader before and ever. And uh, this is, for me, the main point of view. Uh, I uh, want to be, every time, uh, I'd like to, to, have, to be enthusiastic, you know? uh, like, a, like a kid when I go to the show, for example, after almost 30 years in that field, but I still remain enthusiastic. So for me, every, every single page is a new, is a new and I want to stay in that way because I don't want to lose the sense of wonder of this job because I'm a reader, not because I'm an artist. And uh, for me, it's a, a really important point, and maybe the most important point. I want to still remain what I am, a kid that read comics and is curious. And, and at the end of every single book, well, the world I remember at the beginning is different. I could not have put that better. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I don't know. I can't top that. That's great. <laughs> oh, no. Andrea, thank you so much for being on Creator Talks today. No, no, no. Thank you so much. And uh, I appreciate a lot this interview. I hope to meet you in person very soon. I wish you in Florida. It was for you. Very, very hot time for fishing or something. I, I can cook for you. I can cook for you. Very <laughs> good time. Thank you so much, Lee. Thank you so much. Have a good day. All right. Next week, my guest will be Tom Sachi. He is the creator and mind behind the four issue action crime noir series entitled Off Beats. We are going to talk about that series, which is complete. Also, we're going to talk about his hyperkinetic one-shot homage to mid-century Japanese action comics in the spirit of Gigantor and Astro Boy, which is going to hit shops in May from Antarctic Press, the same publisher of Offbeats. And that one shot is titled Ultrabot Go, Go, Go. Why three goes? Well, we're going to talk about that. So please join us next week. And now for the usual information, to reach me, you can email me at contact at creatortalks.com. That's contact at creatortalks.com. Social media, you can find me at Creator Talks Pod on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. 
Instagram, you can see my Saturday Silver Age and Sunday Bronze Age comics posted from my personal collection. This show is available on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, YouTube, Amazon voice-enabled devices, and now on Spotify. Please leave that review on iTunes if you have not done so yet. Myself and other podcasters that you leave reviews for really appreciate it, and it really helps our shows. Now, I know the acoustics of this episode don't sound great, and part of the reason is I've been decluttering the house, my wife and I, and also painting and cleaning and getting a lot of things done we've been meaning to do. And there's a very important reason, and hopefully I'll be able to talk with you about that next week and let you know what's going on. It's all good. All good stuff. So if I sound a little bit out of breath, that's because I'm still wearing my painting clothes. I have to get back to it. I've got a lot to do. But in the meantime, until I'm back next week, be good to one another. And if you're on spring break, I hope you enjoy that very much. And if you're not, well, take a little time out for yourself and enjoy time with family, friends, and your books and comics. Go see a movie. Maybe, uh, I don't know, Avengers Endgame? That is definitely on my list to see. For Creator Talks, this has been Christopher Calloway. Until next time.